Welcome again guys. Uh, we are talking about the microscopy lecture series and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about the scanning tunneling microscopy. Now scanning tunneling microscopy is one of the major advances of uh, the change in electron microscopy and it's a kind of different feature of microscopy that we use. Because up, up till that, now we have talked about the microscopy with the light source right they are called the light microscopy or bright field microscopy I can say then we have also seen using electron we can actually look at very high resolution images using the scanning electron microscopy as well as the transmission electron microscopy so it's electron as a source uh, now in this case of scanning tunneling microscopy we are also using electron as a source but remember here the electron that we use in uh, electron microscopy that electron behaves like a particle behaves like a particle just like the classical uh, phenomena of physics but the electron that we use in scanning tunneling microscopy behaves like a wave so this is called the quantum quantum mechanics so the way that we use the idea the principle that we use in scanning tunneling microscopy is about with the quantum tunneling effect or with the quantum physics the law of quantum physics right because the electron can behave like a particle when an electron can behave like a particle let's say we have a barrier in both the cases but when the electron behaves like a particle just like the classical physics uh, suggests us in that case that electron let's say sorry that electron will go and hit to that wall and bounce bounce off and release so this is a reflection if the electron behaves like a particle but this electron if it behaves like like a wave this electron has the capability to pass through that wall that is the idea so that is called as the quantum tunneling so that's what we talk about in this video so this is the principle that is the core foundation of quantum tunneling microscopy or scanning tunneling microscopy remember STM scanning tunneling microscopy why the term tunneling here because of uh, the, the use of quantum tunneling effect now the quantum tunneling effect is telling us the classical picture is electron can go and attach to the energy barrier and hit the energy barrier and can return but in case of if they behave like a wave that wave can pass through that energy barrier from one side to the to another side that is possible that is the quantum tunneling effect we use this quantum tunneling effect here so the idea here what we do in the scanning tunneling microscope is that obviously we have a sample right we have a sample whatever sample let's say we have uh, that sample majorly we use in this case is not always living sample or not even living samples we use this uh, quantum tunneling effect or the scanning tun tunneling microscopy to understand uh, the surface of different atoms the surface of different let's say different molecules that we see right uh, different metals we can see the surface of graphite we can see the surface of gold uh, surface of silver and all this the surface of them so how they are arranged how they are organized so it's not only important from the perspective of biology but it is more important in the perspective of chemistry and physics okay and many more geography also because geology uh, we, we often use scanning tunneling microscopy now the idea here we have the specimen this is the specimen and what we also have here is the structure called the tip the tip is nothing but it's made up with metal with high conductance and this tip is responsible for releasing electrons from there right so what we actually do we connect these two things both of them are electron carriers so we actually connect the tip with the sample in such in, in some way right so if we connect it with a particular voltage remember if we add a particular voltage between this tip and the specimen elect I mean uh, electric current start to flow between them that is the idea due to this voltage between the tip and sample current waves start to flow from the tip to the sample or from the tip to the specimen right so this is the idea now the idea here is the, the, the amount of electricity that is generated and that is formed between the tip and the sample it is indirectly proportional to the voltage so if you apply higher voltage the electrons that will be released will be low 
if we use lower voltage the current flow will be high right so they have indirect proportionality between this voltage and the current flow right so if you look at in this image we can see it pretty clearly that what we use here the tungsten tip here and in this case you can see this is the tip of the atom with a positive charge and here is the sample atoms negative charge and we create this voltage there uh, attach these two things to, to pass some light uh, pass some current between them here you can see the voltage uh, arranged there right so once you do that the idea now is to detect the surface structure of the specimen which is this one right so how could you do that now here is the idea now let's say this is it and the sample let's say this is a this is how the sample looks like for example the surface of the sample looks like uh, ups and downs and all the way like that now here is the idea we have this tip now the tip is uh, attached with a rotator which can move from one place of the sample to other place of the sample right so during that process we can use two important techniques to find out the surface structure of the sample one of the technique is termed as the constant current another is one is ter termed as the constant height so constant current and constant height the idea in case of constant current is let's say we bring this tip here say so this is the tip for example say tungsten tip okay now the idea in this case is so the idea here is that this tip is providing that current because of this voltage gradient because of this whatever voltage gradient is present it is transferring some of the electrons there so as it is transferring some of the electrons during this process so there will be a particular current that will be generated between the tip and the sample's surface right now as you can see there are two factors one is the amount of current another one is the distance between the tip and the surface the idea here if the distance between the tip and the sample surface is close I mean they are very close to each other in that case the current flow will be more because the distance is less so if the distance is less the current flow will be more right and the distance is high the current flow will be less again indirectly proportional in this case so indirect proportionality again so the idea again in this case what we see here is that the tip what we want to maintain is a constant current right so if we want to maintain a constant constant current in that case we should have a constant flow of current irrespective of the distance that we see so we need to bring this uh, we need to position this tip in such a way so that current remains constant throughout the scanning period right but the surface area is not even it's uneven so the idea here the distance between the tip and the surface area point here in this case let's say this is point a the distance between point a and tip here is small and there is a particular current now once this tip moves a little bit and the tip is now in position somewhere here and as you can see the distance between this tip and the position b of the surface is more so accordingly the current flow will decrease but here we want to maintain a constant current to, so to maintain the constant current this tip will come down a little bit to compensate the distance between the tip and the point of the surface to maintain that constant current similarly again when it uh, comes down to this point of C the distance even becomes more so the tip should come much closer to again maintain that constant current so to maintain the constant current throughout the surface like uneven surface like this sample this tip needs to come down sometimes and go up sometimes so in this way whenever it is coming down whenever it is it, it, it is it is in close proximity with the sample specimen in that case that data is feed to the direct detector detector record that the specimen is in depth there and wherever there is a height up there so the tip will go up so again in that case it will record the data that yes definitely the surface is higher that's why the tip goes up so whenever tip goes up in the detector it, it detects the higher surface whenever tip goes down it detects the lower surface in this way we can actually construct this image by looking at uh, the detector kind of the similar image that we see in case of the sample that's how we can detect using the constant current 
and we can also use the constant height method in that case what we do in that case we maintain the height constantly the same thing is going to happen if we maintain the height constantly this tip is going to be present as it is and throughout the scanning process but let's say here once this tip is present to the point A which is pre pretty closer so the current flow is high in that case very high current flow now just after that when the tip is now becoming to the point B the current flow will be less so what we observe in detector is a change in the current flow because we maintain the height constant so there won't be any change in the height the only thing will change in this case is the current flow so sometimes we see high current flow sometimes we see low current flow so if we see now let's say if we see the high current flow in this case let's say in point A if current flow is very high then again it's going down and low then again slightly high then low then slightly high so again we can construct the surface structure pretty easily so these are the two methods of calculating so this is the principle as you can see here this is the STM tip and again uh, these are the electrons that are coming out from the STM this is the voltage gradient plus here minus here and as it is moving in different surface let's say the surface area is changing like this you can see as you can see here difference in the graph as you can see in detector so detector can detect this change in distance or change in the voltage change in the current right so by looking at this we can tell what's going on and the idea here is this tip will migrate from one place of the sample to another place of the sample from scanning that sample from one to another place right so what it uses here it uses the property of electron as a wave uh, for this for this electron to be inserted to the surface of the sample so that the current flow is possible right so that's how the whole process of scanning tunnel in microscopy actually work and this is the instrumentation of scanning tunneling microscopy as you can see here let me take another yeah as you can see here this is the this is the probe this is the tip this is the tip tungsten tip usually this is the sample the voltage is applied between this tip and the sample and it is being tunneled with the amplifier because the thing is the the, the, the energy I mean uh, whatever surface uh, current it generates that current is pretty low for the detector to detect so what we need to do we need to amplify that signal so for amplifying that signal coming out from the tip we require this tunneling current amplifier because this tunneling current amplifier will amplify the current that is coming from this tunneling effect between the tip and the sample and we get that and we have a control scanning unit which controls uh, the scanning property how this tip will move from one place of the sample to another and then finally we can record this data using a CPU or processing unit okay and uh, this is in action how the process works as you can see di from different angles actually but the idea here you can actually construct this kind of beautiful images of the surface by looking and this is the actual uh, scanning tunneling microscope that's how it looks like it uh, not at all looks like any kind of uh, microscope that we've seen previously so it's a microscope because it helps us to understand the the structure in very fine level because the distance between the tip and the sample is kind of in angstrom level so it's very good actually in resolution and all these things as you can see here uh, it's it's even more like 50 nanometer range it's giving us that much of the detail of the structure in different layers it's very good but we can use it for live imaging also we can use it for let's say here you can see the cells and we can also see some cilia uh, out uh, coming out from cell surface so so we can actually use it in different purposes but uh, the use of scanning tunneling microscopy is not limited to biological applications it is vastly used in many different field of science so that's it guys and I hope that's helpful if you like this video please subscribe hit the like button and put some comments out there share this video with your friends in the social media thank you